After the Qajar dynasty was defeated in the Russo-Persian War in 1828, large chunks of Persian territory was given to the Russians, such as a large part of the Azerbaijan province and the city of Ashgabat in Turkmenistan. Azerbaijani territory was now divided into two parts. The larger, approximately two-thirds, remained with Persia and the smaller part was annexed by Russia. The first uprising against Russian rule took place in 1826 on the eve of the Russian-Iranian War of 1826 to 1828. It began in the city of Ganja and later engulfed the whole region to the extent that it forced the Russian army to retreat back to Tbilisi. The insurgency was suppressed and many leaders of the revolution were exiled and executed. Another more threatening insurgency erupted in Cuba in 1837. The reason for this revolt was related to the decision of Russian authorities to recruit Muslims for the Imperial Army. The local leaders demanded that this recruitment should stop and also demanded a reduction in taxes and duties. In April 1837, the insurgency erupted and seemingly the Russian authorities decided to satisfy the demands of the rebels. However, the movement spread throughout the Kuba region and Sheikh Shamil of Dagestan sent a letter to the leaders of the revolt, Haji Muhammad and Yar Ali, appealing to them to join his larger fight against the Russians. However, by September, Tsarist forces managed to defeat the major rebel forces, but instability lasted for another two years. All leaders of the insurgency were executed. In 1838, another rebellion broke out in Shaki, where the local nobility tried to restore the Shaki Khanate. North Caucasian tribes also supported the rebels led by Muhammad Meshadi. The leaders also used popular discontent over increases in taxes and duties to rally the population. The rebels managed to take Shaki in the summer of 1838, but on 3rd September the Russian troops ousted them. After the Russian Revolution, when the Soviets came to power, they were well aware of the history of rebellions in the Caucasus region against Russian rule, particularly in Azerbaijan. Therefore, they created policies to weaken resistance against them and break the unity of the people of the Caucasus by instigating sectarian, religious and ethnic divisions. When Stalin came to power, he attempted to freeze all ties between northern and southern Azerbaijan. This policy was also followed by ethnic tensions in Iran, which were exploited by Stalin. For example, during this period, Reza Shah banned the use of the Azeri language in the region. This, along with the communist propaganda sponsored by Stalin, caused many Azeris to resent the Pahlavi dynasty. However, Stalin was a hypocrite who himself suppressed all cultural and religious values in the Soviet Union. Stalin was simply using such policies to exploit the situation in Iran and cause violence and instability. This instability in Iran allowed Stalin to further weaken relations between Azeris and the Iranian regime. After the Second World War, 
Moscow encouraged a Soviet revolution in southern Azerbaijan. Because of Stalin's encouragement of violence in southern Azerbaijan, thousands of Azeris were killed in violence between the Iranian Communist Party and the Iranian army. Despite Stalin's propaganda campaigns, many Azeris in Iran remained proud of their heritage, which was in fact a mix of both Persian and Turkic roots. For example, the great poet Muhammad Hussein Shahriyar, who wrote poems in both Azari and Farsi, remained proud to be Iranian during this period of instability. Moving on, Stalin also attempted to break historical cultural links between Azerbaijan and Turkey. In 1937, the Latin alphabet used in Azerbaijan was replaced in favor of the Cyrillic script. This decision was made in order to break links between Turkey and Azerbaijan and was based on the fact that Turkey had also shifted to the Latin script in the late 1920s. Furthermore, restrictions on religious activity were imposed in Azerbaijan as the power of Muslim clerics was restricted and many mosques were closed down. Similar policies were applied in other Caucasus regions such as Armenia, where the Armenian church was restricted. By the 1940s, traditional patterns of leadership were destroyed, religion was suppressed and the social environment was fundamentally changed. Stalin also executed and exiled various Azari leaders and intellectuals who refused to comply with his policies. For example, in 1937, Hussein Javid was arrested and exiled to a labor camp in Siberia for refusing to serve as a propagandist for Stalin. Arrests and executions continued until the fall of the Soviet Union. In the 1970s and 80s, various Azerbaijani intellectuals and historians attempted to debunk Stalinist propaganda and educate Azerbaijanis about their true cultural roots and history. For example, in the 1970s, Abul Faz Elchi Bey was arrested on charges of pan-Turkism and nationalism and was exiled to Siberia. In 1988, the Azari historian Suleiman Ali Arli bravely refuted Stalin's rewriting of Azari history and stated that Azaris have a joint history with Turkey. During this period, nationalist sentiment had become so strong that the state stopped repressing intellectuals and eventually Azerbaijan gained independence. <laughs>